please remember nothing in this video should be taken as financial advice. We'll know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false. Objective is which is political control. And so you can imagine uh, fishing fleets causing more problems, lots of pressure, pressuring countries around the world to step away from defending Taiwan. And I, I, have, I have seen how this goes, the war games. They all end up badly. They end up badly for, if, 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 if you think our stock markets are volatile, volatile today, the moment you start to see Chinese military start to move to their eastern shores, you will see volatility that is um, of a scale we haven't seen maybe since 2008. Um, every time, the assets that sit on the island of Taiwan, everybody knows them, uh, are impacted nearly immediately. The Japanese are forced to get involved very quickly. And the global economy suffers in, think, uh, think, uh, a couple of weeks, not a couple of months. Mike Pompeo said that if China were to position for a hot war, the stock market would sell off like 2008, not in a matter of months, but in weeks. Pompeo was the head of the CIA under the Trump administration. The three letter agencies understand the scenarios that are unfolding, and yet we continue down this path of destruction. Of currency, the, the common, the universally accepted currency, how have sanctions, do you think, changed? The dollar's place in the world. Well, you know, I think this is one of the uh, uh, gravest uh, strategic mistakes uh, committed by the U.S. leadership, you know, using the U.S. dollar as an instrument for foreign uh, political uh, confrontation because dollar was the cornerstone of American prosperity and power and everyone understands and understood that because however many dollars you've printed, they go around the world, inflation is at a minimum, I don't know, 3% or so, 4%, which is an acceptable level for the US. And you can print as many US dollars as you like. Uh, you know, because uh, the public debt of the US is testimony to that. But be that as it may, dollar is still the cornerstone of American power across the world. But once the U.S. leadership decided to use the U.S. dollar as an instrument for foreign policy confrontation, once they did that, they dealt a blow to the American power. I would be loath to, you know, uh, use uh, for... Uh, Better words uh, that, are, that are improper, but uh, it is a very grave mistake. Look, uh, even the American allies uh, do decrease their dollar reserves. They are starting to search for ways to shield themselves. Because if the U.S. applies restrictive measures to certain countries, such as, uh, you know, uh, freezing assets or restrictions on uh, transactions, then it is a very grave uh, signal to the whole world. What did happen in Russia until 2022, around 80%, 80% of uh, Russian foreign trade transactions were carried out in U.S. dollars. Russia was doing the United States a favor by using the U.S. dollars. There's more demand for a currency. The more demand that you have for a currency, the stronger the currency is. So when we're told that the U.S. sanctions against Russia were a success that crippled Russia's economy, that's just simply untrue. And Russia is now using different means to, to, to trade their different commodities with different different countries and different currencies. So we've essentially taken demand away from the dollar and pushed it elsewhere. And uh, US dollar accounted for about 50% of our transactions with third countries. Whereas currently this figure has been brought down to 13% or so. But we were not the ones to prohibit the use of U.S. dollars. This was not our goal. It was the U.S. decision to restrict uh, our transactions in dollars, which is absurd, especially from the point of view of the interests of the U.S. taxpayers, because this decision has dealt a blow to the American economy, undermining 
the American power across the world. Теперь у нас значит, расчеты в расчеты в юанях были, кстати, 3% процента примерно. Incidentally, our transactions in yuan accounted just for three percent right now. Uh, we've uh, gone up to thirty percent in transactions in uh, rubles and thirty four percent in yuan in renminbi. So why did the U.S. do that? I think uh, it's self-conceit. They thought that the Russian economy would collapse, but it didn't. <coughs> Moreover, look at the other oil developing, uh, oil uh, producing countries. They are doing the same thing. They are following our suit. They start to pay for oil in renminbi. Do they understand what they're doing in the U.S.? What are they doing? <laughs> you know, uh, uh, Central banks are exploring CBDC or central bank digital currencies. Right now, Ripple is one of the larger players setting up this technology and infrastructure for each central bank to use. They have over 10 central banks. When CBDCs are being used in the mainstream, there is no longer a need for a reserve asset. All the testing coming from the BIS is for countries to swap currencies bilaterally. That means that there is no reserve currency in between trades. Tokenized commodities, equities, currencies, everything is on a path to becoming tokenized, and the USA is making moves that they know will weaken the status of the reserve currency. In my opinion, they are pushing this system to the max, maxing out the debt, pushing the dollar to the edge, because they already know it's coming regardless. Yeah, so I think the, the, the one is the technology. I mean, at the end of the day, we're the technology partner. So we have proven technology um, that has been used in, you know, 10 or more other countries, 10 or more other countries, 10 or more other countries to do similar sorts of pilots. Um, and then again, I think it was, it was our, it's our experience, right? The fact that we, um, we, we took the time to sit down with the bank, understand their objectives. And we put together a comprehensive package. So we're helping them with um, all aspects of the project. The technology is the center, obviously, but we're, we're bringing our experiences to, to Jewel. Before we continue, I'd like to take a moment to thank NordVPN. NordVPN is a service that offers you the ability to encrypt your IP address. Your IP address reveals your computer and location. Every time you search for something, it's recorded and logged. Data brokerages are logging everything that is put onto the web. When you search for something, your IP, as well as the search query, is logged. By using a VPN, there is one global IP that everyone is using. The VPN, or virtual private network, is logged and not your individual IP address. VPNs are a great resource to protect your privacy, but they're also good to block malware, trackers, and adware. Nord has over 61 countries where you can choose where you want to locate your VPN. But you could also have a dedicated VPN, and that means that when you log into your favorite sites, they're used to the IP address, so they don't ask you for caption to prove that you're not a bot. Nord also has something that's called a data breach scanner that makes sure that your credentials were not leaked onto the dark web. So by using a VPN, you're protecting yourself. You encrypt your IP address and you make sure that your data stays secure. If you use my link, nordvpn.com slash Darren, you can get up to 60% off of the annual plan. So be sure to check it out at nordvpn.com slash Darren. My link will give you a special discount and a money back guarantee. And it is a natural process that cannot be um, helped. They have to adjust themselves using the advantage that the American uh, nation still has. In this case, something will change for the better. The Chinese economy has become number one by PPP. They have outpaced the US in volumes. And then uh, there is India, 1.5 billion people living there. And then comes Japan, uh, fourth, and Russia is fifth global largest economy. Uh, last year, it became the largest economy in Europe, despite all the restrictions and sanctions. Do you think it is natural? A lot of sanctions are exerted against us. We have been disconnected from SWIFT transaction system, and our ships are under sanctions. Our 
Uh, vessels, oil-carrying vessels and uh, aircraft of ours. The biggest number of sanctions in the world is applied against this country and we have become the biggest economy of Europe over that period of time. The instruments and the policies of the United States are ineffective. So they should think what to do. If they come to, to understand that, I mean, the elites, the ruling classes, things will improve and and the, the leader of the country will probably act in the interests of the voters and the decision makers at different levels. But you're, you're describing two different systems. You say that the leader acts in the interest of the voters, but you also say these decisions are not made by the leader, they're made by the ruling classes. <coughs> you've run this country for so long, you've known all these American presidents. What are those power yeah. centers yeah. in the United States, do you think? Like who actually... The ruble dropped 80%. Their stock market got hit. A lot of bad things happened initially. But you don't need an economics degree to understand that weaponizing the reserve currency is going to have more blowback than just the, the ruble having some issues. You see, Russia has recalibrated and readjusted to these sanctions, and trade still continues. And the policies of the United States are ineffective. So they should think what to do if they come to, to understand that, I mean, the elites, the ruling classes, things will improve and, and the, the leader of them. Putin mentions that there are families in the U.S. that are making the rules. The USA is supposed to be a constitutional republic. There aren't supposed to be ruling families. However, we all know it's true. The banks are ready to pounce on the opportunity to make more money. This comes in the form of tokenizing and reshaping the entire financial system. This is happening, and we have seen some of the world's wealthiest and powerful gravitate towards the crypto world. This is not by accident. It's because they're following the money. The EcoHealth Alliance is this group run by a zoologist who got $50 million from the Defense Department to help a lab in China work on coronavirus and making them more humanized. I mean, like, we should be able to adjudicate, did we start COVID? But we can't. All of these very simple things we don't adjudicate. Look, Bureau of Labor Statistics claims that the consumer price index is based on a cost of living measure. I claim that's not true. In order for that to be true, you have to take in consumer preference data and you claim that you don't work with consumer preference data. I'm either right or I'm wrong. It's hugely consequential in terms of billions. I claim that the Bureau of Labor Statistics is completely lying, that it's working on a cost of living framework, and that the academic responsible for it, a guy named Erwin Dywert, uh, his theory of superlative index numbers is hogwash. It doesn't work. It's based on homothetic preferences. That takes an afternoon to adjudicate. I claim that there is no labor shortage of scientists and engineers, despite claims that it's been going on since the 50s, because large market economies don't have labor shortages. That's a feature of centrally planned economies. There is no possible way. That's, that's a four-minute discussion. We are just lying. Lying, lying, lying is the substrate of our society. We're lying about physics, we're lying about economics, we're lying about finance, we're lying about coronavirus and biological research. We're lying about uh, monetary aggregates. How many different hills are you waging a war on? There's only one. It's called managed reality. This is all managed reality. What's that? This channel has been tracking the debt reset. We have heard from countless professionals that this ends, and this ends badly. Yet the stock market is at an all-time high. John and Jane Doe believe everything the mainstream media financial television is telling them, that the Magnificent Seven are the U.S. economy and we can't be beat. The problem is there are experts that say the opposite, that the debt is so enormous that we are buckling and ready to implode. How do we ignore the experts like Ray Dalio or Jeffrey Gunlop and others telling us that the reserve currency is coming to an end and debts and deficits are going to be so enormous that we will be unable to pay them? You know, I have, a, I have this image of a 
of a tanker that is flipped over on a freeway and there's a bodies scattered and people are bleeding and the tanker's on fire and there's a cop maybe a special forces guy with an automatic weapon and says nothing to see here folks move along you're like nothing to see there's like a severed hand on the pavement and you've got a tanker and it says you know danger flammable hazard and it's is it about to blow and tell, tell me what's going on like nothing to see here folks well the nothing to see here folks is managed reality we all know what that is policeman is actually saying Act as if there is nothing to see here and move along. Mm. It's an instruction to pretend. So we are being given instructions right now to pretend on everything. Pretend that you don't understand the CPI, Eric. Oh, okay. Pretend that you don't understand immigration and labor markets, Eric. Okay. Pret pretend that you don't understand physics. Pretend that you don't understand plagiarism. Pretend that you don't understand... Um, biology and gender well the, you it's one hill it's in for it's enforced pretending by a class of people that thinks that it is in a position to tell us all how to think at this level now i don't disagree that that policeman has a right to say move along folks nothing to see there's a very clear reason why that person is saying that. But when you start to say that to your experts, to the hazmat team who's telling you, you know, don't, don't put out an electrical fire with water, when you are telling nothing to see to the mother who sees her child on the pavement, when, you, when you're constantly telling everybody who has a stake in something, and particularly everybody who has expertise in something, you're a charlatan, you're a grifter, you're a fake, you're a fraud, you're the, it's like, Shut up. Just shut up. There's one hill. Are you the only person on that hill, though? Because, as you've said here, there's oh, a bunch no. of different... The CPI, the, the stuff to do with physics, the stuff to yeah. do with the space travel. I, I appreciate travel. what you're saying. Funneling on you. There are lots of people on the hill. The problem is that you have to visit all of these fields to know it's in that field, too. Throughout history, we have seen the same story over and over again. Empires collapse under their own weight, and the history books will have the same ending for the U.S. empire. What's different is the status quo will be disrupted into a digital paradigm, a technology that has never been explored. Blockchain technology, digital asset infrastructure, is changing the capabilities of the global world order. Instead of a unipolar world, we can have a multipolar world where, through DLT, we will be able to arrange in a democratic process how international affairs are carried out, how global economics are carried out. We have seen so many things over the last few years that it's to a point where it's ridiculous, where the, the talking heads are just telling everybody what to say, what to feel, how to feel, how to act, how to react. And it will be no different when the empire finally collapses. They will still control the media, and they will tell everybody how to feel and how to react to this travesty that happens. But it will not be labeled a travesty. It will be labeled something different. And that's what we're already seeing. That's already what's taking place. It's just few are able to see, see it for what it is. Who blew up Nord Stream? What? You did. I was busy that day. <laughs> Nate, it, it, do you have... Do you have uh, I did not blow up Nord Stream. Uh, thank well, you, though. Maybe there's an alibi. Well, personally, you might have an alibi. But CIA doesn't have one. Do, do you have evidence that NATO or the CIA did it? You uh, know... Well, you know, I'm not going to go into detail, but as they say, you know, you've got to uh, search for someone who had interest in that. And in this particular case, you don't have, uh, you have to search not just for someone who is interested in that, but also uh, someone who has the capabilities, because there are many people who are interested in that. But, you know, not everyone is capable of uh, scouring the uh, bottom of the Baltic Sea. But I'm confused. I mean, that's the biggest act of industrial terrorism ever. 
and it's the largest emission of CO2 in, in history. Okay, so if you had evidence, and presumably given your security services, your intel services, you would, that NATO, the US, CIA, the West did this, why wouldn't you present it and win a propaganda victory? <laughs> well, it's very difficult, you know, to achieve a propaganda victory because the US controls all the global media. And as far as many Europeans, uh, European media are concerned, the end beneficiary in many cases are American uh, funds, foundations. So, you know, so, you know getting mired in that, well, this is one avenue uh, to pursue, but, you know, it can uh, turn out to be very expensive. And moreover, we might reveal our own sources of information without securing the end result. The whole world understands what happened. The Western world controls the media. They control what Jane and John Doe think about and how they react to everything. This includes to financial and economic matters. We're adding trillions quarterly to the debt, yet no one seems to care. Bitcoin was sold to the public as a saving grace. But the reality is, it's a reset to a completely digital system. A system where everything is tracked and traced has been the plan from the get-go. Energy from Russia, you know, using rubles. Uh, there's, there's transactions that are happening now that are skirting the dollar. And they certainly want to uh, supplant the dollar, at least have a seat at the table of the reserve currency. And this is why I think the next recession is uh, the, uh, the problem for the reserve currency status of the dollar. Because it's going to be a very, very bad uh, economic situation, fiscal situation. Uh, and, and that goes along with accelerating the trend towards another reserve currency. Yeah, I, I do think that there's a desire um, for control among the so-called global elites. Um, I think that's become relatively apparent uh, in recent years. And I certainly think that digital currency is something that they would be uh, viewed valuable by people that want to you know, pull the levers of power. Because what you end up doing is, is tracking everything you do. Right. Which it feels like they're doing already via social media and listening to your listening to your conversations through your, your coffee pot maker, you know, and all that stuff, these appliances, your mic. But, 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 you know, once you get the digital currency, I, I find it very strange that people talk about how attractive, like Bitcoin, just use that as a digital currency, how Bitcoin is and how excited they became when there were ETFs that could do Bitcoin. Because it seems very contradictory to me that if your appeal was this transparency or anonymity uh, with with bitcoin then why would you want to buy it on a regulated exchange it, it seems utterly counterproductive I, I for one don't believe that there's such that bitcoin is anonymous i don't believe that uh you can hide underneath it i noticed that prosecutors have have successfully prosecuted criminals because they use bitcoin the opposite of transparency your 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 record is there for the, the till the end of the eternity so that I think it is, I, I had an ant problem where I, in my closet, I had this incredible amount of ants and a fellow told me, Hey, there's this, this recipe, you can look it up online on how to get rid of ants. And what you do is you take a uh, water and you put sugar in it and then you add borax, you know, the 20 mule train, train borax, and you soak it, uh, a cotton ball in it and you just put it in, in where the, where the ant line is. And I would, I, I would recommend that you put it on a piece of tin foil because the solution ends up, ends up uh, sticking. You put it, it it'll, it's hard to get rid of it. So I put it in uh, the closet and I couldn't believe what happened because I looked at it about six hours later and I was, it was like a horror movie. I, I couldn't believe how many ants there were. You, 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 think, you think you got a lot of ants, you can't believe how many there are. Like a blur of ants and they were, they were going from the cotton ball, they take the solution and they would put it into the nest. And it would, and within two days, there were no ants anymore. It killed the entire ant colony. Because what happens is the ants love the sugar water, but they don't have an awareness that they're also carrying the borax, which happens to be toxic and poisonous and ends up killing them. I kind of feel that that's what Bitcoin is. They, they, they act like the anonymity is the sugar water, but it's actually the borax which is blockchain record lasts forever. A lot of times these things are the opposite of what they're sold as. 
uh, and it's it, it, it's very disappointing. You know, I, I, I hate seeing people disappointed. You know, I hate when people sell somebody a bill of goods and it turns out that they're just swindling them. Really, it really makes me very angry. So I, I think Bitcoin might be that. But uh, like it or not, it does seem like some that would be consistent. Some movement towards that type of a system is certainly consistent with things that I'm talking. The big bang saw the potential of Bitcoin's ETF, and that's when it was approved. U.S. regulators have been anti-crypto, but it happened fairly quickly after the bank saw that they can make some money. Same will happen to the rest of the industry. Now crypto's liquidity is growing, while the U.S. dollar is being phased out for international transactions. The more liquid, the more liquid the crypto economy becomes, the more utility it will serve. When the ruling class is ready, we will see a transition into a completely different system. Most of the secrets the CIA has are about people, not machines and systems, so I didn't really feel comfortable with disclosures that I could not endanger anyone. Thanks everyone, I hope you enjoyed the show. Please take a moment to like and subscribe. If you enjoy content like this, please consider joining my Patreon or my ghost site, dmjr.ghost.io. Thanks.